Check, please. Hey, welcome back. In this video, we're talking about Amazon. This company has fallen a bit in the past few months, almost $500, and we're gonna look at the financials. Obviously, this is an incredible company, a staple of the United States and many of the world to come. Should you invest, that's probably a question you should be asking. So we'll show you the numbers, the financials using our software. We'll get to the Stock Analyzer tool to show you what you could be paying. It's just math, folks. So we'll head over to Mo. He'll show us how to trade this as well. I bring your questions to Paul and Mo. They have multiple businesses. They employ they employ hundreds of people, and they have $100 million in real estate and assets. They'll give us a mindset whether we should be investing in something as amazing as Amazon. As Amazon. As Amazon. <laughs> Go ahead, Paul. What do you think, baby? Thank you, Seth. Follow us on Instagram, our new Everything Money Investing Instagram account, and then follow Seth Mo and I personally because our egos really need it. Yes. So guys, this is our Everything Money software. Um, we have tons of videos showing the software, but let's pull up Amazon. So we're going to the Eight Pillars tool. We're going to pick up Amazon, or I could spell it correctly. Um, go right here. And you so, were saying you've made a mistake on this company. In the I, past I've fall. made a mistake on Amazon. Years ago, I was negative on Amazon. I got their growth potential wrong. This is what we talk about. Growth is a huge aspect of value investing. If you get the wrong growth numbers, it, it doesn't matter what's going to happen. You know what I mean? I was wrong on Amazon. I didn't think to myself, yeah, this is going to be a 500. I literally said, this is not going to be a $500 billion company in revenue in 10 years. Uh-oh. Awkward. It became a $500 billion revenue business in 10 years. So that's on me. But I don't mind being wrong on those, but it's a good learning experience. So, so guys, this is our software. If you've watched any of our videos in the past, you go through a thorough eight-pillar analysis. What we're going to start doing is going to our eight pillars tab here at the top and going through them. But if you want to see the actual numbers and how we look at them, there's over 1,200 videos in the past where we do eight pillar analysis. Please, by all means, go through them. You'll learn something. You'll get an idea if you're new to the channel. But we love doing this. But let's go to the eight pillars tab first. So guys, we've got a lot of X's here. First off, jumps out at me. I usually go to these ones first. These are our valuation. This takes our PE over a five-year period and look how high it is. We want under 22.5, it's 121. On the five-year P, we went under 20, it's 130. So it immediately jumps to me and goes, ugh, seems expensive. Now, just like before, if the growth potential is there, it cannot be, it can end up justifying that expense. But as the, as the company grows bigger and bigger and bigger, it's harder to grow at a much higher rate, correct? Some other ideas here, shares outstanding, not too terrible. They've increased their shares outstanding by 6%. They're diluting owners. We want companies that are keeping shares the same or decreasing them. That way they give more ownership to, to the investors who've been there for a while. Uh, a lot of debt, 11 times their five-year free cash flow. Now this one right here, their five-year free cash flow is down 7.8 billion. That seems like a red flag to me. That shouldn't happen for a company growing like, my, like Amazon. So let's go to their cash flow statement. I think I'm intrigued, Paul, because even with Thanksgiving and Christmas, this this company has fallen 16% since mid-November. Yes. And so this is quite a dramatic fall. I mean, $500 from off of 3600 is, I mean, so anyway, uh, I don't know. Uh, my, my, mom, my mom has many shares of this, and she bought it pre-COVID, so she did well. But I guess a lot of people out there might be wondering, I'm assuming their growth is up, but the stock is down. We have some decisions to make. Correct. Lead me. Lead me away. Now, look at the cash flow statement. There was a big drop in free cash flow. They spent a lot of money on, if you look at right here, their capital expenditures, because free cash flow is cash from operations, less your capital expenditures. Look at this capital expenditure number. It's skyrocketed. 11, 13, 15, 30, $57 billion. So that's the reason for the big drop in free cash flow. Go figure out what that capital expenditure number is. Mo, um, Seth, do you want to go look at that? Yep, Mo, yep, do you want to look it up yep. in their in their um in their news? 10K? Oh. I I'm gonna speculate right now. I think I remember correctly. I think they are investing big in like planes and delivery trucks and et cetera. That could very I think well that's be what it. it is. If that's what it is, that's gonna make their business better. It's probably one time charges. I'm pretty sure. So I keep that. that remember, guys, there's two ways, there's two forms of capital expenditures: maintenance and growth. I never punish a company for growth but capital expenditures. Even though you can you can grow, you can spend money stupidly, but the problem is most companies don't report the difference. So back to our eight pillars tab. Um, revenue growth is huge. Five years, the revenue is up $300 billion. That's where I screwed up, guys. Never did I ever think that in five years, the company would have $300 billion more in revenue. Their net income number skyrocketed $24 billion. Now, this all means nothing unless we're able to project some price in the future. That's why we have the stock analyzer tool. So what this allows us to do is to go in, 
and make assumptions about the future because every investment is the present value of all future cash flow. We can only make assumptions and the stock analyzer tool will tell us based on those assumptions, here's the exact price you need to pay for the company. So that looks like you need to say something. Yeah, pull it up. I'm glad you recognize that, Paul. Pull it up because I guess the point for you- What am I pulling up? Oh, stock analyzer. Okay. Because the point at home, folks, is I would struggle with a pricing. You hear people just flippantly say, I'm buying this stock if it's under blank. And sometimes I wonder in my head, where are they coming up with these numbers? This is the final piece of the puzzle. If you like the financials, you can plug in some assumptions and see what return I can I get. Because Paul, once I buy this stock, I can't get that money back. What I pay is what I pay. And I need to either go up from there or mitigate my downside loss. So show, show me how to do this. So guys, um, <clears throat> And this is the I, first thing I do is do a 10-year analysis for a company like Amazon. It's going to be around for a while. We will all be floored if Amazon's not around in 10 years. Mm-hmm. It's going to be around. So revenue growth numbers. Now, look at these numbers. I didn't think they were going to grow 26% a year for the last 10 years. So let's do some conservative. We want to do a conservative number, kind of a middle number, and a high number. So my assumptions are going to be 8, 12, and 16% revenue growth. Just to keep in mind how, how high that is. At 16% revenue growth in the next 10 years, that's 4.4 times more revenue. Last year, they did 460 billion. So that would take their revenue to $2 trillion. Oh I immediately say, I want to get rid of that number. I don't want to put 16% in. That's aggressive. $2 trillion. The largest company in the world right now, I think is GM. They do $500 billion a year. Or Walmart, they do $600 billion a year. This would make it over three times larger than Walmart today. What was it 10 years ago? Well, Amazon's still so kind of, is it still kind of new? I mean, can you say, what was it 10 years ago? Oh, it was ago? like 60, 70 billion maybe. I don't know. But so, again, so, it's it's a bigger and bigger company. Growing uh, when you're much right. larger is a yeah. lot harder. It's like, Everyone already tell Barry Bonds it. to hit more home runs. It's like, he's already hitting a ton of home runs. Like, how do you get him to double that? Uh, I see, you're right. You know what I mean? Everyone always uses, already uses Amazon. So I'm actually going to decrease this. I'm going to go 6, 9, and 12%, which I still think is high. That's still high, but that's okay. Profit margin. I do think their profit margin increase as they get into more like services businesses. Yep, so I'm going to go with subscriptions. 4, 5, and 6. I should do 4, 4 point, 5.5, and 7. Free cash flow margin, I'm going to do the exact same thing. PE, I'm going to get killed here. 14, 16, 18. 14, 16, 18. Actually, you know what? 13, 15, 17. Because guys, the bigger and bigger the company is, the less growth potential it has. And when the growth potential is low, you have to put a lower PE in. Okay? And for final desired return, if you've watched any of our videos, you can invest in an ETF and get 9 or 10%. So in order to do an individual stock with proper margin of safety, do 12.5%. Mm-hmm. Hit the analyze button. What's it say? <sighs> Rough. Oh boy. A low of 500, a high of 1,600. So even at... This high, this assumption of 12% revenue growth, which would take the company to the, um, to $1.4 trillion in revenue in 10 years, which is still an insane amount of revenue. It might actually be, it it might actually be 5% of the U S economy in general in 10 years. I just think this is overpriced. I've said for a while, I think it's a sub 1000 between I've always said um, 800 to 1,000. It might be 700 to $900 stock. I just don't buy into... At 6% revenue growth, what does that make it? 6% revenue growth for 10 years times 460, 823 billion. A lot more reasonable to me. A lot more likely. Okay, so I look at it going, I'm not buying Amazon anywhere close to this $3,000 number. Am I crazy? I'm crazy. Guys, it's just numbers. It's just numbers at the end of the day. And every investment is the present value of all future cash flow. And this is the way I look at it. You know, Paul, I think it's my job at times to somewhat challenge you on some of these. Maybe put my, I try to put myself in the mind of the viewer. So like I went back to 2010, mm-hmm. you know, they, they did 34 billion in revenue. Okay. Their stock price was, oh Lord, their stock price was 70 bucks, 135 bucks okay. around that area. Because people say, Paul, you're too stringent and too strict on your rules. You would have missed out on Amazon. So in essence, they've they've over 10x'd in revenue the past 12 years. Well, he did miss out on Amazon, but he didn't miss out on a company like Microsoft. I missed out on Amazon, but how many potential Amazons were there where I didn't miss out on the massive losses? Right. 
That's the big thing, guys. Even Amazon going up 20 times, if you invest in 50 companies, assuming their growth is going to be like Amazon, you're going to lose a lot of money, well, even with the one Amazon that does very well. It's funny, Paul. I was just... Can I make the other analogy? Sure. 22 years ago, if you bought all the dot-com and tech companies, you'd have made a 3.3% annualized return versus like 7.5% or 7 or 7.5% 7 in the market. And of that 3.3% return... 80% of it was from three companies. Amazon was one of them. And the Amazon one went from $113 down to six at the low. So you saw that rise from six to 3,000 and it still only gave you 3.3% return, investing in all the garbage wow. from thereafter when the market did over double that. That's my point. I mean, I guess stupidly thinking, I was saying, well, in 2010, they did 34 billion in revenue. They've over 10 x But actually the stock price- x Yeah, but the stock price- Is up- you, 30 times. Yes. So even that simplistic, it, you can see how overpriced it is. It actually, I'm imagining we did this video in 2010 and you would have said, if I would have told you this is going to 11 X in the next 10 years, would, would we believe it? And what would the price be? And of course the price would be much, much smaller than it is. Today. It's still like, anyway, I just try to think that concept of like, cause I'm still learning alongside a lot of our viewers, you know, yeah, Paul. I'm still learning alongside a lot of our viewers too. It's just, I look at numbers and say the numbers are going to tell me because I have to get paid based on the numbers. And a stock price in the long run will go where the carb company's fundamentals are. But if you overpay, look at Intel, Cisco, Micron, all these tech companies from 2000 to now, their stock prices have not matched their revenue and profit growth. Why? Because you overpaid too much back then. And the only ones that did make sense are the ones that had massive, had massive growth in the last 10 years, Amazon, Apple, and Microsoft. Those are the only three companies that those three companies made up 80% of the growth, 80% of the 3.3% annualized return. Guys, I repeat, 3.3% versus the market doing 6.5 to 7.5% return. And 80% of that 3% came from three companies, one of which went from $6 to 3200 If that doesn't scream to you obvious that you can overpay for growth, I don't know what will. And Amazon is just too expensive for me right now. Could I be wrong? Absolutely. But if I have 100 Amazons, I will save a lot of money. Even if the one Amazon works, the, right, the other 99 will not work and it'll lose me more money than the one Amazon. Even if two or three of them work, it won't make up for the losses of the other 97 or 98 of them. Oh, boy, it's always eye-opening, Paul, when you run through this for me. Welcome. So if you're interested, you're drawn to these numbers, you can have the software and Paul will tell you how to get it right now. Go ahead, Paul. So guys, we created the software because our subscribers were sick of waiting for us to make videos and they wanted to be able to analyze their own stocks on their own. So we created the software. We put it all on your mobile phone. So everything you saw in the video is available on your mobile phone in full. You get 30 years of financial data. You get access to Seth Mo and I. You get the full eight pillar analysis. You get the full stock analyzer tool. And then you also get everything that's coming right here. Everything down here. Exclusive video content only for our subscribers. Everything. The chat community with all of our users. This is all available for only $1 per day. That's it. $1 per day. If you can just increase your gains by 1% or 2% or decreases your losses by 1% or 2% each year, this will lead to hundreds of thousands, if not millions in your portfolio at some point in the future when you retire. This is a no-brainer, $1 per day. You're locked in at the price. There are two ways to sign up, everythingmoney.com or Patreon. The benefit of everythingmoney.com is we're not large enough yet to charge a sales tax, so you get to save the sales tax for the time being. So again, the guys, $1 per day gets you locked in, leads to hundreds of thousands, if not millions. No brainer, sign up. And remember, the software goes up every single month. And so get in now. You can lock in at that price. If you want to trade with Mo in the bid -ass Nation, the glorious Egyptian leader will lead you down the path of awesomeness. Go ahead, Mo. What are they doing over there? Okay, so here is, this is going back to Ju June of 2021. And if you just draw this line, there's really, this stock price is just consolidated between 3,600 and basically 3,200 and just gone back and forth. This is a great shot. To me, this tells me this is a great stock to swing trade. You notice when you have these inclines, it really doesn't last very long. That's why I say this is better to swing trade because you can't catch a long-term trend, which is not surprising in this market. Uh, let's go over and just see what's going on from a daily perspective. And here we are. Lots of movement through the through the sweet spot. You can grab, you can could have grabbed it here, grab some here, and even then you could short all the way down. And now you're below all four major moving averages. So right now you're in short short shorting position territory. Vol selling volume is starting to come in. You're below all four major moving averages. Everything is not looking very good for Amazon. And if the market continues to fall, 
Amazon is one of the things that's going to lead this market down. So if I was you, even though this is expensive, I would put it on a shorting watch list. And for, from a day trading side, I mean, what is this? Three thirty one hundred dollars a share? Yes, it's expensive. So probably not in anybody's wheel. I'm it's not in my wheelhouse to day trade. I'm not. I'm not going to waste my time with something like this. But guys, look at it from a swing trade. Put it on your watch list. Short it when you can. And when the market falls, learn how to short. Learn with me in the in the bid and ask nation. You will learn how to short. You'll make money on the way down. These fangs, especially Amazon, will be one that you can capitalize on. That is our take. We get excited when these companies fall down a bit, maybe into our wheelhouse. We will keep you posted moving forward. Fondle thumbs up. Join the community. We'll see you next video. Thanks for watching.